As an engineer, your biggest value lies in your ability to solve problems. I taught more than 3,000 mechanical engineering students and supervised 12 bachelor's and master theses. And from that experience, I can safely say that the steepest developments I have seen in people is when they improve their problem-solving skills. Note that this doesn't depend on the kind of engineering discipline, software, mechanical, electric, civil engineer. Your domain-specific technical knowledge is only valuable if you can bring it to the table in the context of problem-solving. By the way, this is the main reason some students do well during class, but fail the exams miserably. They just cannot handle problem statements they didn't ever see before without help. I find it unjustifiable that universities do not offer dedicated courses on how to think about hard problems and what methods to apply when you get stuck. A good mentor can teach you in this subject, but few students have that luxury. Thus, I have seen a lot of engineers going through the painful process of learning how to tackle real-life problems only after they graduate, leading to slow progress in their careers or even being stuck in the same position for a decade or more. In the next few minutes, I will teach you my approach to problem solving that I developed during my time as a PhD student in thermofluid dynamics and my subsequent employment as a software engineer. The process consists of a few very concrete steps that will give you a guideline on how to approach anything, from daunting exams to long-running development tasks. I taught these steps to countless students and saw positive outcomes every single time. You can apply and profit from this skill no matter your technical skill level. How much you learn from this video solely depends on your ability to focus on the next few minutes and internalize this process. The analogy we're going to be using is that the domain in which you want to solve a problem is like a map in a video game. Finding a solution is akin to planning a viable way through the terrain to your set goal. You don't think about minor details like the height of the grass or gravel on the path. You account for big hurdles though, for example a huge river. Just make sure that you will be able to deal with the details in some way or another. Actually implementing a problem solution is traveling the area depicted by the map. Some new challenges might come up and you might need to take minor detours. The better your planning was, the closer you can follow the path you thought up. Usually the planning part is where people fail, thus we will focus on this. If you've played video games before, you know that the map is typically not uncovered completely, especially at the beginning of the game. There are areas which you cannot see because you've never been there. This is what makes finding your way hard. The state of the map relates to your knowledge of the problem domain. The more experience you have solving problems of this kind, the more of the map you will already know, and the easier it will be to find a solution for the current problem. If you're lucky, there's a marker on the map that indicates where your goal is, which equals problem solved. The first step of solving a problem is the initial assessment. I can't tell you how many people I've seen that only skim through or even skip the step completely, oftentimes students, but also experienced professionals at times. Assessing the problem consists of three important parts. First, be very clear about your goal. You cannot hit a goal without knowing it. If the definition of problem solved is very vague, try to make it as concrete as possible before moving on. The second step is to know where you currently are on the map. You can only start planning a way when you know both your starting position and your goal. In the problem domain, this is equal to going through all the assets you have to start out, which might be the given values in an exam question or the circumstances outlining a development process. And third, check which parts of the map are already uncovered. Is there already a known path to your goal? If not, can we take advantage of some well-trodden paths that will lead us at least halfway there? Doing the assessment step only halfway oftentimes leads to much larger time investment in the subsequent steps, because you might go into the wrong direction or go through uncharted terrain even though there was a known path that would have gotten you to the same place. After the initial assessment, we go into the main loop. The first question you always need to ask yourself here is, can I see a way from my current position to the goal? If you can, ask yourself if this path is viable as well. Reasons it might not be viable are excessive time requirements, prohibitive costs, or your gut feeling that there has to be a way more elegant solution. 
If it is viable though, execute on your plan. This is the happy path, and in cases where you can find a solution quickly, there is no need to complicate the process any further. However, most of the time your answer to the question, can I see a clear way from my current position to the goal, will be no. In this situation, a lot of careless, premature decisions tend to be made by some people, while others might stand paralyzed without actionable decisions at all. It is your ability to handle this exact situation that distinguishes you as a valuable engineer and leader from a follower that struggles to pull his or her own weight. In order to progress at this step in the procedure, I apply something I call strategic exploration. This is the heart of the whole procedure. My goal at this point really is to uncover key regions of the map, which means finding answers to sub-problems that are blocking me from getting to the goal. However, it is oftentimes not clear which sub-problems are most valuable to solve, such as to unlock an important part of the map. There are some techniques though to ensure a good return of the time invested in this step. The first one is to identify the benefits you get when a certain sub-problem is solved. Ask yourself the following. If I were standing in this position on the map, could I then easily move a big distance towards my goal? This is often true if other parts of the map are already discovered, but not yet connected to your current location. So what you're trying to do is get back into known territory. In the current example, you can see that the middle way seems to connect well to the known region that contains the goal, so this would be a preferable choice. A second approach that is viable if there is absolutely no map knowledge on the other side of your subproblem is to climb a hill. When you stand on top of a hill, you can see farther than when you are located in a valley. A valley would be losing yourself in some details that are not yet relevant to the overall solution. Instead, try to make progress on more general concepts. This could mean producing a prototype that lets you test some hypotheses or coding an MVP and getting some better testing done to get a clearer understanding of key features that are still missing. Or when in an exam, it could be as little as writing down a few equations you know which apply to the system at hand and see how you can connect those to your known values in order to gain new information. Startups that develop new technologies are often at a location on top of a hill. They can see and understand big parts of the problem domain and thus have a competitive advantage over those who have not climbed this mountain yet. Making a reasonable choice about the direction in which to head is what makes this exploration strategic, rather than random stumbling around. Sometimes making a beeline towards where you assume the goal to be can lead to dead ends. Experience is your most valuable asset here, so don't stress if you can't do this consistently yet. Just practice and try new ways. This process can't guarantee a problem solution instantly, but it can make you into a world-class problem solver over time. The step of strategic exploration is the phase of quick and dirty solutions, make simplifications and assumptions to speed up progress at the cost of accuracy. It is not about designing parts of a finished product, but about making quick progress in a certain direction to see what the merits and the ensuing sub-problems are. Staying with the video game analogy, Run through areas without looting every chest, doing all the side quests, etc., to see whether the main storyline continues here. After strategic exploration, you will find yourself on a different part of the map, oftentimes being stuck on a new sub problem. Now ask yourself Am I in a better position than I was before? If so, this is your new location. If the answer is no, however, go back to the location before you started exploring and choose a different route. In any case, as long as you have not reached your goal, repeat strategically exploring until you find a way to your goal. Eventually, you will find a solution to the problem. The path you've taken will not be straight and efficient though. It depends on your situation whether it's worth it to find a better solution to sub-problems and thereby improve the overall approach. This could lead to lower manufacturing cost of a machine, improved functionality, better maintainability of code and a solution that is easier to understand. In an exam, you probably want to skip this step due to time constraints. As you can see, the process itself is not complex. Having said that, there are still many situations in which I have seen people performing poorly when faced with a difficult problem statement. One of the key mistakes I could observe over and over again 
is that they rarely take time to stop, raise their view and assess the current situation within the problem-solving process. More often than not, this leads to very contrived, overly complex solutions which neglect part of the initially intended goals. The missing functionality is then duct taped to the suboptimal solution in a second step. This makes the product harder to maintain, less elegant and more pricey to produce. If you never stop to look at your current position on the map and your past voyage, it is easy to overlook simpler, more elegant solutions. This behavior is especially pronounced when the whole process happens in a time-constrained environment. Exams and student theses are a prime example, but hard deadlines in development also lead to similar results. It is exactly in this context where the phrase work smart, not hard, fits perfectly. Take your time and give your mind the chance to find a better solution, rather than plowing through massive resistance at the expense of all your energy. Even though a process seems simple, it is often required to formalize it to make proper use of it. Think of cooking recipes. It's not that hard to make pancakes, but your consistency will increase if you have the exact ingredients and steps written down. It's the same with problem solving. If you have a very clear representation of the procedure in your mind, it's easier to keep calm and follow these steps. I adopted this approach to problem solving years ago and have since noticed a significant increase in my problem solving competence. I can now take on more daunting tasks without being overwhelmed by the complexity. This not only increased my performance, but also made me more relaxed when faced with daunting challenges. Overall, it has made me a better engineer. Now, set out to become a better engineer yourself and work on this core skill. I'm sure you will find the outcome quite astonishing.